Welcome to the PLT podcast, Pete Wicks, everybody. No Woo! claps. There's no applause. Oh, thank you. I appreciate that. I appreciate I'm that. I'm going to clap, you. guys in the audience. Come on. Here's the producers. Pete, I'm not going to lie. We've been really excited for this podcast, so I think you definitely deserve that clap. Don't one put earth yourself down. Of, one earth have you been excited? I was probably about the fifth person you asked. What was everyone else fucking busy? You were the first, Pete. You were the first. I'm going to tell you that. Do you know what? So today is a Valentine's special episode, and we were like, who would be good for this? And Who's the most what? single person we can think of? Who's the one that is the worst at dating out of anyone? I'll tell you what we can get. That long-haired dickhead from down south. <laughs> and that's exactly why we got you. That's exactly there why we got go. you in today, Pete. No, we are so excited to chat to you today. A little bit. We're going to get quite deep, which is going to be interesting. I know you're very straight talking. So I'm ready just to hear everything. Get a few truths out there. Do you feel yeah. like you're ready for it? I'm ready, baby. It's always better when you get deep on it. That's it. Do you know what I mean? We've just got to go straight into it. So you joined Towie almost six years ago. Yeah. And since then, you've been on your fair share of dating shows. There's been Celebs Go Dating, First Dates Hotel. Tell me a little bit about them. What's that experience been like? Um, well, dating shows are interesting, put it mm. that way. I think that's probably the, the, uh, the best word to describe them as. They're, um, they're all very different. First Dates Hotel was a completely different experience. We was in Italy for that, and that was amazing. The bird was a bit of a nutter, but other than that, it was good <laughs> as gold. Uh, Celebs Go Dating, obviously, I've done twice, and I've worked on the show mm. for... Um, quite a bit I normally do I work quite closely with them on the show and I absolutely love it I absolutely love it it's my favorite show it's the only reality say, show we... it's the only one I watch really I don't watch any reality shows I don't watch I've never watched myself on tv ever um and I never watched myself on that but that is one of the the only shows that I do watch oh my god so you've never watched Howie back oh god no <laughs> on earth would I do that I'm I know I'm a bit of a bell end, so I don't need to watch it back again <laughs> I love that. But you say that, so Celebs Go Dating is your favourite programme. I, I, I Genuinely, as, as far as reality goes, because I don't really watch mm. any reality at all, um, that's the only one I watch. And I think it's just because I, Tom, Anna and Paul are, are really good friends of mine. Mm. I love them to bits. And where I've been on it, I know everyone that works on it. And it's just it's just good to watch. And it's like car crash telly. I <laughs> love a bit of car crash telly. Well, it's exciting for us to watch. Everybody loves it back home. And I think we're all huge fans of it. But what we're really interested to know is... What is your mindset when you go on to a show like that? Are you going on to that show, any dating show, and thinking, do you know what? I could find the one here. I could find the love of my life. Or are you kind of going in there and taking it with a pinch of salt? I, I take everything with a pinch of salt. If you go into something looking for saying, you're not going to find it. That's, that's always the way I look at it. Um, and when people say, oh, I went on Love Island, so I wanted to find love. No, you fucking mm. didn't. That's a load of bollocks. Um, I don't know why people bother saying that, because you didn't do that. You got <laughs> asked to do it. Did you want to go on telly? Yeah, I'll go on telly. Do you, will I make a few quid out of it? Yeah, well, pretty little thing. Give me a deal. Yeah, so I'll do it. Um, so, that's why, so that's why people do. They don't go in there to find love. But when you, do, when you are involved in it, you, do, mm. um, you meet people that you probably wouldn't ordinarily meet. Um, and that's what's interesting. So I don't think you go in, or I, I certainly don't, you don't go in thinking, listen, I'm going to find the love of my life. Yeah, but yeah. if it happens, it happens. And obviously for me, it hasn't happened. <laughs> still single. Still, Yeah, still single, babe. Still Just... single. We're going to verify that right now for all of our listeners, for all these single girls out there. You know, Pete is still single. So yeah. are the DMs open? The D listen, everything's open, babe. <laughs> you know I mean? Be beggars can't be choosers. <laughs> I've been locked up for you. I'm just not a, having that. <laughs> I've, honestly, I've been locked up for you just with the dogs, and even they're, even they're sick of me. They're sick. Well, where are they right now? I thought they were on the couch, but they seem to have done a runner. No, they are on the couch. The, the fat <laughs> one's on the couch, and the blind one's also on the couch. Oh, um, babes. We'll have to see them later. Hopefully, they come and join us a little bit later. I don't think you'll have a choice. Peggy seems to want to be involved in everything. She can't see much, so. <laughs> Typical girl. Well, with the kind of shows that you've done, what's kind of the best outcome? You said, you know, you've not come out with a relationship. You've not come out with, okay, what's the kind of like best outcome you've had or like the best experience you've taken away from these kind of shows? Whenever you do it and any time you do a show or even do things like this, you get to mm. meet people like that work on the shows or um, other cast members or whatever you want to call them. Um, mm. And you generally make loads of new friends. And that's, that's probably the best bit. I, I'm actually quite sociable, um, believe it or not. Uh, oh, yeah? Yeah, as miserable as everyone <laughs> thinks I am, I'm quite sociable. So I like meeting people. So that's probably the best thing out of it, um, is that, yeah, you just get to meet so many different types of people, which is mm. always really fun. Mm. And have you ever regretted either going on a show or any situations that have kind of happened? Have you ever stepped away with, like, a big regret? Do you know what? I, I, I wouldn't say I've regretted any of the shows that I've done, I've regretted my actions on a few of the shows. Mm. Um, 
But anything I do, I always said when when um, I got into TV, like how many years ago it was, mm. that I would only do it if I was going to do it as myself, whether that be good or bad. Because mm. that way, if, if, you, if you go into saying and you do it, whether you make mistakes or not, we all make mistakes. And, mm. and obviously it's heightened when you're on a TV show and you've got everyone telling you this, that and the other about what you've done. But as mm. long as you can go to bed at night knowing that you didn't do things on purpose or you, or you didn't do things yeah. purposely to hurt someone, then what can you do? We all make mistakes, don't we? And fuck me, I've made a few. <laughs> well, that's the thing. It's like you say, you're not making, like you're just doing what lots of people do in their everyday lives, but there's thousands, hundreds of thousands even of people watching it. Like, is that a pressure you've kind of felt over the years? There we go, um, we've got a dog. Yeah, we've got a dog. Um, Yay! <laughs> Is there pressure? Yeah, there hundred percent is pressure because whatever you do is scrutinised. Mm. Um, so it, it, mistakes that people make on an everyday basis come, and, and also you're you're at liberty for the editors or whoever edits whatever show mm. to put things out of context. So some things might not always play out how people see it on the TV, but the most interesting parts are put on TV. So you could sit there and say. Oh, well, I think you're a bit of a dickhead, and you could yeah, be having yeah. a laugh with someone, and it might cut to you just saying, "Well, I think you're a bit of a dickhead." So you're there's you're, no context. There's no context, <laughs> and then everyone's like, "God, he's a savage geezer." Um, so yeah, so you but you put yourself in that position, so you can't moan about it. Mm. Do you know what I mean? There's there's much worse things I could be doing. And I feel like you're very well liked, Pete. I feel like everybody loves Pete. So I feel like you've not done badly off any of them. I've, you know, you've said there's obviously been some situations in the past, you know, where you've been painted out as maybe a bad guy or whatever. But everybody loves Pete. Uh, I mean, I, I don't know about that. Where'd you get that one from? <laughs> You're being very nice today. I like this. I'm just going to start calling you up for self-esteem chats. There we go. We can just have some little, you know, one-on-one -on -one chats. It'll do us good. It'll yeah, every time I need good. a pep talk, babe, I'm just going to call you. Now, I'm tell here. me how wonderful I am. I'm available, Peach. Now, I mean, you can call me anytime you want. Going back to your pre-Towie life, tell me about your dating game then and how much it's changed to where you are now. Dating pre-Towie was, um, was better. Really? Yeah, much better. Come on. So, much like, how, how has it changed? How's it changed? Because I don't really date that much anymore, believe it or not. I, I, that... Honestly, I don't. I don't. I don't. What are you laughing for? What are you laughing at? I don't. I, I mean, listen. I'm. I'm. I was in my peak back then. Okay. Now I'm. I'm. I'm way past the peak. So I'm over the hill now. So it's. Um. Yeah. It's. It's. It's different based on the fact that anyone I date now, everyone knows about it. Yeah. So and believe it or not, despite what I do. Um, for like a like main living or the reality stuff. A mm. private life's a happy life as far as I'm concerned. Yeah. And it's really hard to, to date privately now because everyone wants to know what you're doing. The minute you, the minute you speak to someone, everyone knows about it. Um, so I, I find it quite hard because sometimes, you know what it's like when you're dating. Sometimes you like to go a couple of weeks and, and you see how you're getting on with someone mm -hmm. and then after a couple of weeks you think, nah, fuck that, ain't for me. <laughs> um, but if at that point everyone knows about it, suddenly that person's then another one of your exes. Yeah, so yeah. You start, so everyone, think, everyone you talk to becomes an ex. So it's a new it media you, story. Yeah, so, so it makes you not want to talk to anyone. Mm. So do you ever manage to do like anything in private? Have you ever managed to keep a relationship private or, you know, not kind of be so in the public eye? And, you know, just day to day, can you actually try and speak to, speak to someone and have a little bit of a relationship without the public knowing? Okay. Yeah, I mean, I... Over the years, I've, I've learned ways to do it. Um, <laughs> there's, there's ways to do it. Listen, if there's a will, there's a way. Um, so you can do it, but it is it is difficult because even even things like social media where you would normally comment on someone's picture. Mm, or even like or, it. Or, yeah, or anything like that. Suddenly, everyone will know who's followed who, who's unfollowed who, and they'll run a story on this person's followed this person. They've liked three pictures. Is there something going on? And mm. then automatically it puts pressure on the person you're speaking to. Mm. And listen, not many people want to date a dickhead that's in, in, the, in the public eye, let's be honest with you. It's, it makes it very difficult. So okay. that's I think, that, I think that's why a lot of people that end up in the public eye date people that are in the public eye because they sort of understand it. Yeah. So um, people that aren't generally don't want to know about it and it makes it very... And also they're put off because they've seen so much about you. I guess they already feel like they know so much about you when potentially you know obviously that's not that's not always the whole story what you see in the press and like you said before the press will pick up on the littlest things on like a picture on instagram on a like a comment it is literally that deep nowadays that the press to, will literally just pick up so quick to the point i i took my mum to an event right i'm really close to my mum i love my mum's a bitch she's like my best mate and i took her to an event a few years ago and uh me and my mum were outside 
And um, I was just chatting to my mum, having a laugh with my mum. My mum's like five foot two, little blonde bird. And I'd just split up with someone. And the next day, my mum was um, a headline Pete Wicks with Mystery Blonde. My That's mother. horrific. Yeah. That's horrific. Uh, like, I'm... Listen, I'm a bit weird, but I wouldn't date me mother. It's a bit odd. Um, <laughs> not so, going there. Yeah, no, no, no. We're not that, we're not that close a family. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, so then I had to put up a, a thing saying, no, this is my mum and a picture of my mum in the same dress. That is actually madness. How did your mum feel? She must have been a bit like, whoa. Oh, she fucking loved the limelight. She was like, yeah, happy days. I mean, if they think that you do this, and she was over the moon. Let the door. Listen, bring yeah, them in. I'll give them like, a one-on-one -on -one interview. Bring it on. She was all over it. <laughs> Um, but yeah, so, so even things like that, you have to be, if you go places, mm. even standing next to someone, it could be like, where's this ain't going on? It's crazy. You think, well, do you know what I mean? All I'm doing is saying hello. Mm. Trying so, to live um, your life. Just trying to live, you know, but like I said, I, I, I can't moan about them sort of things because there's so many wonderful things that have come out of it all. That, um, that's, they're just like little, little downsides when it comes to dating. It is, it is quite difficult mm. and everyone assumes it's really easy. But I think I used to date more before I did tell you to what I do now. So with that in mind, would you ever like to go, if you could, if you could go back to, for like a month to the old Pete before TV, before reality, before fame, would you do it? Yeah, 100%. There you go. I well, mean, 100%. I wish we had a time machine for you, but I oh, feel I like... like that. If you, I mean, Pretty Little Thing must be able to do that. I mean, you do everything else. We're you must be able magic. to make a time machine. We are quite magical, you know, so I think we can probably muster something up for you. We'll try and think Jump. about it. If you can muster up a unicorn, then you can muster up a time machine. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> Now, as you said before, I think a lot of people think you're experienced or seem to think you're experienced in the dating game. Are you gonna are you gonna agree with that? Um, I've been around the block, <laughs> let's be honest with you. I've been around the block a little bit. I'm knocking on a bit now. I've been single most of my life, so I've been around the block. <laughs> but what would you say you're actually like in a relationship? Um, well, if you ask me, wonderful. If you ask people I've been in a relationship, fucking terrible. Um <laughs> No, do you know what? I've, I've, I don't have a lot of relationship experience because I've been single most of my life. So um, a lot of the time, yeah, I mean, I don't know. I don't know what I'm like in a relationship. I'm, I think I'm a fairly nice guy. You know what I mean? What, but, are, you, um, what are your like go-to traits in a relationship? Like what are your strengths in a relationship? Tell us those. What are my strengths? I'm very caring. We love that. Um, I like to do, I, I like doing things with people. I'm, I'm, I'm a fixer, okay. so uh, I'm not very good. I tell you what, it's probably easy for me to tell you the bad bits. Let's let's, not, let's do that as well. <laughs> yeah, um, I'm not very good at emotional stuff. Right. Okay. Um, because I don't like to talk about myself. Oh shit! I'm back. Hello. <laughs> Come on. Um, we're good. We're good. I don't like to talk about myself, so right. I don't I don't open up very much. Right, okay. So I guess I think a lot of girls probably do struggle with that because those girls yeah. are very emotional and we like to talk about our feelings. Yeah, and I'm 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 really, really bad at that. And that's that's probably the, the thing that has prevented me from being in more relationships than what I have done and giving people a chance. But you've got to have, you know, we all have our ups and downs and different kind of traits. You've got to have some really good traits, Pete. So you said before you're really caring. I think all of our listeners wanna know what what are, what the rest of the traits are. Um, I'm, do you know what, I, apart from being caring, I, I, I think I'm quite fun. Do you know what I mean? I'm quite spontaneous. I like doing spontaneous things. Um, and I can be romantic. What's your, what's your ideal date? Like what's, what's your perfect date? If you were going to take someone on a first date now, actually not now cause it's COVID, but in normal world, what would the first date be? No pressure. I always think, do you know what? I always think, and this is, this is, um, probably not, um, a typical thing that people say. I think people rely too much on what you do on a first date mm. and actually it's got nothing to do with it. It's True. about the person you go on a date with. <laughs> so doing all their mad activities and all that shit, I don't want to see someone climb a wall. That doesn't tell me <laughs> nothing about them. Do you know what I mean? I don't want to see someone go and do like jet skiing or some shit. That doesn't tell me nothing about them. <laughs> I'd rather see it and talk to someone on a date. Mm. So I love drinks, I love bars, I love all that sort of stuff. The best first date I've ever had is I took someone to Rome on a first date. Well, that's pretty all right. Look, yeah. look, even Pete's like, yeah, I'm quite proud of that one. The little smirk came out there. Uh, that, was before, <laughs> that was before the TV and all that sort of stuff as well. And that was, that, do you know, that was such a good experience just because you get time just to see what someone's actually like. And mm. I think when you go on a first date, people concentrate too much on what you're doing and not on the person you're on a date with. Yeah. So you can't really judge whether or not you actually like someone or have a connection with someone if you're too busy fucking doing all sorts of stuff. 
That's it. So, um, and tequila is always great on a first date. You can't go wrong with some tequila. I mean... So, I've never had, t touch wood, I've never had a bad date. That's good. I wonder, what do you think, like, all the girls that you've had these first dates with, would you think they'd report good, good things as well? Probably not, but let's not worry about that. Um, no, <laughs> I'm sure you know they what? would. If, if, if you, if you want to make a date good or you want to... Any time you spend time with someone, you can make it good if you're interested in what people have got to say. Yeah. And whether or not that's someone that you want to continue dating or you want to see again, you can still have a really good time just based 100%. on the fact that two people that don't really know much about each other get to know each other. Mm. And that's always fun. Mm. So, um, so yes, yeah, so the first dates for me, is, is, is they're always good. <laughs> You've got to enjoy them. You've got to enjoy. You've got they to enjoy it. You've got yeah, to. Yeah, you can't. You can't. I don't understand when people say they have had a bad first date. Like, how bad can it be? <laughs> I've heard some fucking horror stories though. Wait. Like, I want to hear these horror stories. You can't drop that and not tell us. Oh, I've heard some absolutely horrendous ones. Um, I've had blind dates are fun. By the way, have you ever been on a blind I've date? I've never now? been on a blind date ever. You've never been on a blind no, date? No, never. I feel like I'm too much of an overthinker. I'd need to know like most things because. Right, this is the problem with, with people going on dates. Right, go right? on, go on. Let's it's hear it. overthinking. Everyone yeah. overthinks everything. What do I wear? What do I say? How do I do this? What do I do at the end of the night? Do I sleep with someone? Do I not sleep with someone? Do I kiss them? Do I not kiss them? All that sort of shit. Doesn't matter. Do whatever feels right. And I think if, if you go into saying not expecting anything mm. and just people are too worried about the destination, they forget about the journey it's and so they never true. enjoy the journey. They never enjoy the journey they're on. So mm. they're too worried about where it's going to go and am I going to like this person before you've even spent time with them. Mm. Well, it doesn't matter. If you don't, you don't. Then you move on and, and you find someone else or, or whatever else. Enjoy just the time of just being in the, in the present. You know what I mean? I feel like that's a really good piece of advice in general, just in life, especially well, right that, now. Yeah, 100 especially, yeah. It, like now it's really hard to date mm. um, for everyone uh, other than like this. And it's really hard to create a connection with someone over Zoom mm. or whatever else. Because you haven't got, I'm quite tactile, so you haven't got that body language, the touch and all that sort of stuff. So, so it, it makes it very difficult. So I do feel sorry for single people like me um, in, in lockdown. So what has been your experience in lockdown with dating? Have you been, you know, doing some Zoom calls? Have you been trying this whole new world dating or not? Uh, not really, to be really? honest with you. I've, I've been, yeah, I've been, I've been really busy and it's been really nice to have... Um, a bit like the first lockdown, it was really nice to have a bit of time out because I've been running mm. about for so many years. It was nice to have a bit of a time, a time out just to concentrate on me, you know, and find myself and all that. Oh, yeah, bollocks. we've all done that. Oh, uh, we've all done that. Um, <laughs> it's good, though. No, it is important. I'm not joking either. Like, I think this lockdown has taught us all so many things about ourselves, about life, about love, everything. Um, it's definitely important. So I'm not joking there. And I've I think it's given. I think it's given people time to um, to reflect as well mm, and mm. appreciate the things in life that you took for granted. So the people you took for granted, or, or mm. the places you got to go, and, and how your life is, it gave you an opportunity to actually think. Do you know what? Things aren't as bad as what I, what I thought they were in the first place. So mm. you can use this whole lockdown thing as a positive. One hundred percent. And obviously, I mean, it's still shit. But... <laughs> it's still lockdown. It's still COVID. I mean, but hopefully, better things are coming this year. Fingers crossed. Fingers crossed, babe. And I mean, I know we're talking a lot about your personal relationships and, you know, like I say, we're getting deep, but does it bother you how much attention your love life actually gets in general? I mean, I find it fascinating because <laughs> I, I'm really not that we're fucking interested. We're all obsessed interested. with it. Well, I'm just not that interesting. <laughs> Honestly, like whenever people are interested in anything I'm doing, I think, why? Why on earth would you be interested in what I'm doing? <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, it, I, I think it's harder for, for women than it is for guys. Okay. Hundred percent, it's harder for women than it is for guys. It's harder for for women to date someone mm. like a guy who who might be in a public eye mm. because there is quite a bit of attention. Mm. Um, but I think it's harder for women who are in the public eye to date than it is for for, for guys because you get a lot of people you don't understand why people are interested in you. Are they interested in you? Are they interested in the person they've seen? That's on TV? it. That's it. And I think trying to judge whether or not someone's actually interested in you for the right reasons is quite difficult. Mm. Is that something you've struggled with? Um, yeah, yeah, like massively. But I mean, I always question why people are interested full stop. <laughs> but yeah, let her laugh. Well, surely you can do better. Fucking hell. Um, I'm but, not having um, this, Pete. I'm not having this. I feel like all of no, our listeners are like, what's he talking about? No, it's, it's, it's true. But it's just, it's very difficult for 
to get to know someone when they already have an opinion on you. Mm. I mean, I've separated over the years. What I am in, in real life and what I am when I'm just being normal mm. is slightly different to what you are on a teddy. That's why I've got like a stupid teddy nickname, like Pirate Pete. I'm not really a fucking pirate, am I? <laughs> do you know what I mean? But we love it. I don't, I don't have a boat or a parrot. So, it's, it, it, do you know what I mean? I'll get seasick, so I'll be the shittest pirate ever. <laughs> I actually saw that. I saw that. That was on, um, what was that? Celeb- Celebs Go Dating, you're on a boat. Yeah, don't And it went downhill boats. because you were, you were feeling a bit seasick. That was quite, that was quite entertaining. I liked that one. Yeah, don't mark those, babe. Not, not for me. It's not for you. I mean? So he's definitely not a pirate deep down, guys. Just, you know, to confirm that, he's actually not. Yeah, yeah. It's not about the motion in the ocean. I'm telling you that. <laughs> um, okay, right. There we go. It's not so, all about that. Yeah, no, it's not all about that. You've got to have a decent sized boat. Um, <laughs> there you go. That uh, Ain't that the truth? See, Nat's agreeing with me. She knows all about it. <laughs> I feel like I'm going to get shot for this on this podcast. Sorry, PLT. Oh, listen. Listen, we're just we're, we're going to bring out some awful this is, bits about you as well. This is da- oh, right. I'm I'm down for it. I'm down for it. This is a dating talk show right now. This is you know you're the, you're actually our male. What's the word? You're a male expert. There we go. You're a male expert for today. You're you're the, basically like the love doctor. So we're going to get the love doctor. The, the love doctor. Pete, the love doctor. It's a new word, new name. Okay, all right. I'm going to take that. I mean, let's expert. Take it. Expert probably wouldn't be the way I'd describe myself, but let's go with it. I'm We're taking gonna go that with one. It. We're going to go with it, roll with it. So you've also got lots of close friends, well, maybe not lots, but you've got some close friends that are in relationships as well. Who would you say is like your favourite couple in the world? And who would you say is your least favourite couple? Because let's be um, honest, couples are annoying. Favourite couple, least favourite couple. Um, favourite couple, Liv Atwood and Bradley. Oh, uh, Liv, Liv and Brad. I absolutely, I love Liv to bit. She's, she's, she's a good amazing, friend of mine. Isn't she? And she's, yeah, she's amazing. And um, Brad is also, he's just such a lovely geezer. So I love them. Um, Alex and Olivia are a great couple. Um, their wedding was unbelievable. It looked insane. Oh, it was unbelievable. And they're such a, just a genuinely two really nice mm. people. They have got such a beautiful relationship as well. So mm. um, in terms of favourite couple, I'd say them two. Do you know what, what's, because... it, what's interesting with that as well? Sorry to interrupt you there. What's interesting with that is last year for Valentine's Day, we had Alex and Olivia on as our Valentine's special. And now it's you, Pete. Yay! I know. You, you've gone from how to do it right to how to do it wrong. We've got uh, to explore one year all apart. areas. Do you know what I mean? We've got to explore all areas. Yeah, 2020 was such a shit year and 2021's looking so bad. We might as well get some fucking Molly on to talk about dating that knows nothing about it. <laughs> Pete, you know I'm I mean? telling you, this episode's going to do well. Everyone's going to love this. So I- I'm not taking that. <laughs> um, so okay. yeah, they're my two favourite couples. Good. Least favourite couple. Oh, God. Um, listen, I could go Sam and Zara, couldn't I? Because, I mean, that's not gone fucking too well, is it, over the past few months? I mean, um, I mean that that's probably um, one that we thought you might say. Yeah, I mean, I mean that's not individually. I like them both mm. um, together. They're fucking annoying, aren't they? Um, so, but yeah, they're both they're both nice people, but they've had their ups and downs, haven't they? So, what's, what what is, what is the situation there? What is the dislike of them as a couple? Well, actually, to be fair, I mean, I, I like. I like them as a couple in terms of the fact that when he's with her, I don't have to speak to him. So that is <laughs> that is always a benefit for me um, because when he's with I, I don't have to be involved in that. So um, he sort of, she sort of takes over. So that's a good thing. But um, I don't know. I mean, as a couple, they're just, a, they, I mean, they're an interesting couple. Interesting. Oh, wait, uh, isn't everyone? That's it. But I think it's more the fact that I just don't understand how Sam's even got Bert. That's what I that's, find that's, interesting. That's what it is. That's definitely what it is. I get that. You, I don't know about anyone else, right? But and this might just be a me thing, which is going to make me sound weird. But whenever you look at couple, I always, I always sort of think I can see you two. Um, you go fuck having sex. Oh yeah, yeah. And then sometimes you look at a couple and you think I can't really imagine that. I can't imagine Sam giving her one. Yeah, do you know? Yeah, I mean, Sam, if you're listening, he probably is. You know, you're his best friend. I get where you're coming from. I'm not going to side, like, I'm not going to have an opinion. Both fantastic people. I'll be honest with you, I'd love to see it. The video gets leaked, I'll watch it. Um, <laughs> do you know what I mean? So, um, <laughs> you know, but I imagine it would it would be sort of like wildlife on one when you see like a like a couple of hippos shagging in a, in a water hole. Do you know what I mean? Like, the man Sam Thompson. the woman. Um, do you know what I mean? Something along them lines. We've gone off to the Explore... What, what's that channel called? The Explore channel? The ex- Discovery, Discovery. Channel. Discovery. Oh, well, the Explore that, channel. That could get weird. The Discovery channel. That's that's some it weird could. stuff there. David Attenborough narrating anything would be fabulous. I'd like... Listen, I'd like him to narrate my life. I mean, you never know. You never know. It could happen. 
Pete. You know what I mean? One day, well, hopefully soon, because the games will be brown bread soon. He's knocking on, isn't it? We love David Attenborough. We love David Attenborough. We do love David Attenborough. He's he's like my idol, but he is about 900 years old. Yeah, he is getting on, isn't he? Bless him. A little bit, We We love you, though, David Attenborough. We love you. Now, before we were talking about you and dating, and we kind of asked what you like on a first date and what you like to do, but what are you actually like on a first date as a person? To the girl, everything. Um, Cheeky, probably. Okay, can see that. Yeah, I think cheeky is probably the one. Listen, I always think on a first date, there's a few things you need to get out of it. Whether or not you can have a decent conversation. Yeah. So whether or not someone can hold a conversation, whether someone gets your sense of humour, because mm. sense of humour is one of the most important things about a relationship, I think. 100%. You've got to, you, like, for me, I want someone who's part of my team. Do you know what I mean? I want mm-hmm. someone on the same level. I want a best friend who I want to rip their clothes off. So they've got to get you in that way. But also the sexual chemistry thing is a big thing on a first date. It's got to be there, hasn't it? It's, it's got, got to be, be there. there. Let's be honest. Just, it, all that sort of stuff. So I would say I'm quite flirty, quite cheeky, um, but fun. Fun, okay. Well, I'd say fun. I think I'm going to take your word. Well, I would like to take your word for it. However, I feel like we do need that validating. The guys in the room are looking at me and like, yeah, we need that validating that. So we wondered whether you could voice note one of your very good friends. I'm sure you've got some amazing contacts in that phone book and get their opinion on this. How do you feel about that? Um, <laughs> what, what, right, so you want me to voice note? So you could voice note a friend and just be like, hey, I'm doing a podcast and they've asked me what I'm like on a first date. What do you think I'm like on a first date? All right, all right. So you, should, we, you, should, we, should we ask Sam? I mean, Sam is a good guy to ask because I feel like he knows a lot about you. Um, God, this is dangerous. <laughs> we want to hear the whole voice note so you can't even step out of the room. We've got to get all the backstage goths. Okay. Um, dickhead, I know you might be feeling uh, filming at the minute, but do me a favour. I'm just on a podcast with PLT, and they've asked me what I'm like on a first date. So can you send me back a voice note with three words telling me um, or telling us what I'm like on a first date? You've seen it in action, so give it your best shot and hurry up. Right, let's, let's see what he says. Let's see what he says. I'm so ready for that. I cannot wait for the reply. So you just let us know when your phone pings, and we'll go back to that. Well, he's online. Oh, he's online. That's good news. Okay, so he's got. Has he got his red receipts on or no? I guess he doesn't. No, he has. He's listening to it. Stop. Hold on. We're gonna. We're not. We're not gonna move on yet. We're gonna take a. I think we should move on. on. I think we should move on. Pete, I'm ready for it. You know. Wait, audience. I can hear the listeners now saying like, "Nah, don't you dare skip." So, I'm gonna take a sip of my water and just wait patiently. Okay. Okay. Let's see. Let's see what he's got to say. I mean, this is probably gonna be waffling because Sam likes the the sound of his own voice. So I've asked, that's why I said three words. Do you know what I mean? Otherwise, we'll be all fucked. Oh, he's recording audio. Yes! I'm ready for it, guys. Everyone get a cup of tea, sit back, get ready for this goss. Because this is... Oh, this is it's a very be short one. Oh, okay. Oh, I love you, saucy little thing. Come over here and have a couple of cocktails. I don't know what the fuck <laughs> that was. So... Wait, wait. So that was his Sam, impression Sam. of you. Sam, I said, give me three words of what I'm like. Don't do a fucking impression. Like, just keep it simple, mate. What's wrong with you? So, do you want to hear that again? Pete, that Sam. let's 100% hear that again. This is an impression of Pete. Right, okay. This is Sam's impression of what I'm like on a first date. Oh, I love you, saucy little thing. Come over here and have a couple of cocktails. Sam. What? Sam. Oh. I mean, I don't even know what to say to that. Why did He's made me sound like, like fucking... I, he thinks I sound like Frank Butcher. Do you remember from EastEnders? Yeah. Do you know, Pat! Ricky! <laughs> like, for some reason, that's what he thinks I sound like. It was so, like, what's the word? Come over it. Like, it was a lot. I mean, I can't <laughs> even get my voice that low. I tried. I really gave it a go then. It's what the, so, the pirate accent. That's quite funny. I like that. So judging by that, what Sam thinks I'm like on a first date, sleazy, um, apparently. Yeah, I mean, I think that's the vibe that Sam is definitely giving. It's a bit contrasting to your story, but maybe he'll come back with some more points. Nat, what were you like on a first date? What am I like? Do you know what? A first date, I feel like I probably talk a lot, like I do now. I'm very talkative, very open, quite an open girl, and probably too loud. All right, fine. So there you go. Right. There's the truth, guys. I feel like I've just spilled some tea on the podcast, but I guess I owed it to you after spilling all of yours. Thank you. Yeah, I listen, I appreciate we're in a good that. place now. We're in a good place. Now, I'm sure a lot of girls listening would be interested to know, back to the dating game, when you're dating, how many dates in does it take you to feel like things are starting to get serious? Do you know what? That's a really good question, actually. Mm. But I think that all depends on a person. Okay. 
I think it takes, no, I'm not one of them. I don't jump from relationship to relationship. Um, I've not really had an awful lot of relationships. Mm. I've had situationships. I've had quite a few of them. Um, yeah. But I think it takes a long time to really get to know someone. So, um, you know, when people say they're in love after a week, I, do, I think to myself, what load of bollocks that is That's because, yeah, you'll be in love the week after and all with someone else. <laughs> um so i think it takes a long time but i think it does depend on the person it depends on the connection you have with someone yeah you can't it's really cliche isn't it it's, it's, it's the most cliche thing to say but you know that spark mm. or that thing where for whatever reason there's something there that you're curious or intrigued about that's the thing that keeps people going for it's like that spice do you know what it is it present that's Presence, what it is present energy I feel like exactly. energy yeah. the is vibe. the vibe, the you know whole what I mean? vibe, the, the vibe. whole feels. Do you know what I mean? Um, but yeah, it's really, really cliche. But it, it's if someone said to me, "What's my type?" Presence is my type now. So it's that thing where someone walks into a room, mm. or they don't have to be the loudest, the quietest, the mm. best look, whatever. But there's something about them that captivates you. And when someone's got that captivation over you, where you just cannot, like, you don't know what else is going on. That's what's important, and that. But I think you can confuse love and proper feelings with mm. lust and obsession. Mm. Have you struggled lust. with that? Have you struggled with that? Because I feel like that is that is a huge thing. Lust and obsession. There's, there's a completely different side. I think mm. love takes an awful long time to show its true colours. Mm. Um, whereas obsession is a completely different thing. And people seem to... Th that's why a lot of people seem to have relationships non-stop. Yeah. They're not in love with every single one of them people. Mm. I don't feel like I've ever really been in love. Really? Not, um, not properly, no. I think, oh, you're supposed I think, to go, no, oh. I, oh, I mean, oh, for our audience. But I feel like that that's interesting because I think it's like you say, like, I think sometimes it can be hard to distinguish the feelings you're actually feeling. <clears throat> Sorry. So the feelings you're actually feeling, whether that is, like you say, lust, whether it is love, whether it's just a bit of excitement, whether it's just something new, like, how, how have you kind of gone through your life and the relationships you have been in and tried to distinguish those? Like, how do you try to distinguish what you're actually feeling? Do you know what? It's really hard for, for anyone. It's got nothing to do with whether you're uh, in the public eye or not. It's mm. just generally trying to distinguish your feelings is a really difficult thing for anyone to, to, to be able to do. Mm. And I think um, a lot of the time it happens in hindsight. So a lot of the time, the way you feel at the time to how you feel when you look back on saying is very, mm. very different. Um, so, and I think that's, that's probably why, I mean, I get a lot of people settle in relationships yeah. because they're used, they're used to it. Mm -hmm. So, and I think that's a really terrible place to be. Do you know what I mean? You can be, there's different types of love as well, completely. I, 100%, I believe in soulmates. Yeah. 100% believe in soulmates. But I do believe you can love someone, but not be in love with them and confuse being in love with someone to just loving someone as a person. And I think the way to distinguish between the two for me is what you bring and what that person brings to your life. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, can you imagine a life without that person in it, whether mm. it be good, bad, whatever? Can you imagine not having them there? If you can, that's not a soulmate, and that's not that's not real love. Mm. That's not being in love with someone. Being in love with someone is not being able to imagine them not being there. Does that make sense? Yeah, one hundred percent. I think I think that definitely puts it into complete perspective. And I think what's interesting there is, you know, you said to me before, I don't feel like I've been in love, but then so. Do you think that at the time when you were in, you know, whatever relationship it might have been, did you do you think that you did think, okay, I was in love, and it's only hindsight that's taught you that you're not? Yeah, hundred percent. And I think that's that's the beautiful thing about hindsight is that is that it gives you some perspective on on things that you may have done and mistakes you may have made, and there's certainly. I mean, when I say I don't feel like I've been in love, mm. I think it's because it's it's it's. It's very hard to compare if you if if you don't genuinely know. I mean, when people tell me, "Oh yeah, I've been in love six times," I mean, I think it's fucking mental. Yeah, you can't. It's, a lot. You, it's, it's different. Some mm. of them are not being in love with someone. Some of them are just loving people. Mm. And he, <coughs> sorry, even people that I've dated before, um, I still love them. I still love them to bits, and yeah. I love them as people, and I think they're amazing people. And but when you're not in something it's a lot easier to understand what your feelings are mm -hmm. when you're in something and you're involved in a relationship or you're you're in that kind of turmoil or the good or the bad bits mm -hmm. it's really hard to take a step back and think hold on what the fuck am i doing here mm -hmm. um and work out whether or not that is love that you're feeling or or just a i don't know an undescribable feeling mm -hmm. that you think is love mm -hmm. i think that's so interesting i think you know i wonder moving forward you obviously said at the minute you know dating's not really a thing for you but when 
it does become that time again. And when you are dating or say if you got serious with somebody, do you think you'd have that in the back of your mind? Like you'd be questioning, what am I feeling? Am I feeling this? Or would you kind of just go into it wholeheartedly? I, I, listen, I, th- I think it's like anything. What's that old saying? Like It's like buses. When when oh, yeah. when you want one, nothing comes. And then when you don't, like, the two come at I once. I love that. We got a bit deep, but we've gone back to where we were. You know, we've gone back we've to gone, that level. Yeah, we've gone back to that superficial level. I like that. Um, but no, it, like, it's true. You, like, so if, like your fella, right? So mm. you're in love. How did you know you were in love? I feel like... How, you... how do you know? How do I because know? I, yeah, I'm, I'm asking someone because I, I haven't necessarily... I don't know if I would know if I was. I feel like, do you know what? Something you said before actually resonated with me is I don't think I could picture my life without him right now. So I feel like that's my answer. There's so many other reasons, loads of reasons. And like he's my best friend, so. There you go. And I think that's the thing. So you put a relationship based on being friends with someone Mm. first, which I think is a really good way of doing it. Yeah. Because actually then you know that person, you know, you you know, different sides. Before you get into all that deep stuff. (laughs) Yeah. You know the shit first and you think I can accept that shit and I'm happy to crack on anyway. Trust me, there's always things you learn along the way still. You think you know everything. Yeah. So I I, I think people overthink um, their feelings and I'm guilty of that. hundred percent. I'm I'm, I'm guilty of that. I think sometimes. I I, I see. I'm, I'm, I think this is where women and men are very different. Mm. So I think women overthink from the beginning, whereas men don't think until it gets serious and then they start feeding something mm. and then they start shitting themselves and overthinking, fuck me, can I imagine being with just this one person? Can I imagine this? And that's, and that's when men start overthinking it, whereas women from the beginning, from the first date, from what do I wear, <laughs> becomes what they, when they overthink. Yeah, it is crazy. I think women are definitely like that. We th- we think every like from the minute get go, it's like, can I see myself in the future with this person rather than maybe not all women, but you know, you go into it thinking, you know, I'm not going to waste my time here. So if I don't see myself potentially this going somewhere, do I want to do it? Which isn't, I guess, the great way to go about it because you never know what you'd miss if you didn't go and do these things. But also, it, it, it's it's a better way than going about it than some guys do and and, and listen I'm not going to start putting down geezers because I am one and, <laughs> and I've done it but sometimes you go on dates and, and sometimes what you're thinking about is am I going to get me leg over and that's, <laughs> as, far, and that's as far as it goes there you go that's really it that's the pa- honesty they don't really think past that point mm. until you get to a point where maybe you've been seeing someone for a few months and you suddenly start thinking fuck me I actually really like this person mm. and that's when men overthink and that can be why men then either do a runner or then go f- fucking fully and Full lay the in. cards on the table. And a lot of the time, blokes do a runner. Yeah, I mean... Because I, they, I guess they we, shit themselves. They shit themselves. I guess women... There is probably women out there that are, I think, you know, we're all kind of different in terms of the way we are. I do think... Like oh, yeah, there's say, definitely women do it as well. <laughs> they're definitely going to date thinking, yeah, I'm getting something out of this at the end of it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, trust me. They just don't get... Yeah, they just trust don't get... me, there is. <laughs> um, but I, do you know what? This is one of the good things about lockdown and, and like all this Zoom and all that sort of shit mm. because you 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 know that that tactile part of it and um you know the physical side of stuff's not there you have to sit and talk to yeah. someone mm. so actually you almost become like what's what do they used to call it back in like pen pals, pen pals. do you know what i mean oh because you know how like when you speak to your nan or your granddad and they talk about we used to write letters and all that sort of shit and they couldn't have that physical thing where they'd see someone mm. this is like a modern day version of doing that because all you can do is sit and talk to someone and get to know them. Yeah. And actually, you might get a deeper understanding of someone based on the fact that all you can do is talk to them. And you haven't got to worry at the end, the end of the night whether you're going to get a, you know, whatever. <laughs> Completely. And I think that's an interesting thing. I think everybody's spoken about this with COVID is there is people that have formed relationships, you know, be it over Zoom, be it over WhatsApp, Lockdown over love. whatever. Lockdown love. Is it going to last? No. I can't wait. Uh, <laughs> I, can't, well, I mean, that, that, that Pete Santa, guys, is a straight no. no. But this is the thing, like, so do you don't think you could meet someone that it would last with afterwards? No, I, I think potentially, yeah. But I also think people are, you see a lot of people that get in relationships now because they're fucking bored. Yeah. Yeah, it's so true. So and true. And actually, when your real life resumes and you can go out and you can do all the things, are you still going to be as reliant on, on that person to speak to and cure your boredom? Are you Probably st- not. Are you still going to be that person? I see couples like getting together like yes. in my personal life and I'm thinking like, you know what? If he was going out all the time like he what like he normally does, would you two be together? Mm, I'm not sure. Like, and I, I can't exactly. wait. I can't wait to see. Do you know what I mean? Like, hopefully, nah, we're gonna sit there with a popcorn bag. We're Pop gonna sit there with a popcorn. popcorn. Hon, we'll be ready. We could do a TV we'll show on this. This could actually be a show. Lockdown love. Will it be or will it not be? There you go. We'll have to wait and see. Who knows? Listen, you heard it here first. <laughs> Me and Nat have got a new TV We've got show. A new coming TV out. show. E4. Come on, commission it, please. He's already got one. Let's get another.
Yeah, well, after my fucking one, they won't give me another. Oh, don't lie. Congratulations on that, by the way. Before we go continue, like, that show, I think during lockdown, that's exactly what we need. I actually watched it the other night, and it, I didn't look at my phone once. It took my mind off things, and I had a good laugh. So love the realness, love everything about it. So congratulations. Thank you, babe. Appreciate it. Now, continuing the dating talk, what are your thoughts on online dating in terms of like, apps? So things like Tinder... I don't even know what the what's other thing. What are other dating apps? I've never actually used um, a dating app, so I have only ever used one. Okay, go on. Um, what's it called? Raya. Right. Um, and I've never met anyone off it. Okay. I've spoke to people. I I he's a bit of a boredom but boredom killer yeah. really because you sit and just flick through to see who's on it and you sort of in case you find something you fancy. Yeah, but then I I never reply to anyone really. <laughs> um, just airing all these girls. All these poor girls are thinking they got a chance there. No, I, I mean, I don't think they give a fuck, I'll be honest with you. <laughs> um, but, yeah, just because uh, I, I find it a bit of a weird concept. Like, mm. when people are on things for specifically to date someone, like, what's a good first line? Oh, I have no idea. Like, honestly, I'm not trained in that department. Like, I feel like I probably I mean? could be off the cuff. Like, if it comes out naturally, it comes out naturally. Like we what? said before, I feel like if you've got that energy and you get on, a nice one line will come out, but I can't stand her. What What are the th kind of things people you put me, in your DMs? Do you want me to give you some examples? Let's see some, like, I want to hear examples. What are these, what people send you? Yeah. Right, let's, oh my God, everyone, get another cup of hold tea. On. This is going to be I've good. Got, I've got a lot again, I've got a lot, hold on. Um, yeah, because you get some weird ones. Some people just go with the eye emoji. Oh, what, like the two eyes? Two eyes. Side eye. Yeah, that's, wait, wait, is wait, that what wait, that is? Wait. Is that side eye? Can you do I, it for me? Oh, that's very good, yeah. I feel like that's a very, bit sexual, a side you, eye. Do you think? Do yeah, you think that's what it I feel is? like it's like, ooh, like a bit of you. Well, there you go. So okay. you get a lot of eyes. What right, else do I mean, you get? Um, I feel like... Sometimes you just get the usual stuff. Some people just go with, hey, uh, hey, sorry, I don't come on here much. Are you good? Um, Wait, so is this on the app? This is on a dating app or is this on Instagram? This is on a dating app. Oh, Instagram's a fucking completely different I was about to say, whilst, whilst we're here, we may as well see the Instagram too, no? Right. Okay, here we go. So this is an interesting one. Okay. Well, Pete. I have two questions for you. Answer carefully. Would you rather know every language or know how to talk to animals? Second question. Would you rather own a dragon or be a dragon? I hope you just exited that. Like, sorry if you're listening, babe, but that's that. You, I mean, I think you'd rather chat to animals. Is that what um, you'd go for? A hundred percent. Yeah. You'd all love to I chat mean, to animals. Dr. Doolittle style. Love it. Animals are better than people. Exactly. People. Exactly. Um, so, yeah. So, so some people try and be really quirky, but it's, yeah, yeah, it's a, bit a bit of a weird one. Yeah, that's a bit too much. Now. But I've never really, I've never really used them that much. It's sort of just like a, a, I find it quite interesting. But I've never really used them, and I don't, I don't know a lot of people that have used them successfully, mm. other than just getting a bunk up. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? I know a lot of people go on Tinder, and you get a Tinder date, and they, they basically all go get what they want out of it, and then then it's over. Back on, yeah, back then they're back on Tinder <laughs> doing like the the um, serial Tinder daters. Um, <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of them. There's a lot there's of them. There's a lot of, but there's each a lot of my own. pictures. There's a lot of my pictures on dating apps. I feel like it's outrageous that people do this. I've seen myself on Tinder before. Well, no, somebody's messaged me before and has been like, you're on Tinder. I'm like, I'm absolutely not. Can you please send me these pictures? And what's the most insulting thing, Pete, is they've used terrible pictures of me. I mean, why they're even on my Instagram, I don't know. But why would you choose the worst pictures of me? <laughs> I mean, you think that's bad. The problem that I have when people use my pictures, they normally put my age at 40 on. Um, <laughs> now, that really fucks me off, right? Because I know I know, I look like I'm slowly decomposing, but 40? Fucking hell. Um, what a liberty. You do not. And, you do not look like you're decomposing at all. 40 is definitely, yeah, that's fine. And, and it's always a really bad name. Like, it's always like, hi, my name's Gary. Um, do you know what I mean? Like, Yeah, you don't come I mean, across as a Gary. I'm not going to lie. Do I come across as no. a Pete? No. Yeah, like, but, yeah, but you suit it because you you are Pete. So I guess I can't answer that. I feel like you do suit Pete. I mean, who calls their kid Pete? I don't like my mum for that. Is, he, is your full name Peter or Pete? It's Peter when I'm done saying wrong. Okay, Peter. Right, I remember that. Okay, great. Yeah, if I do saying wrong, then it's Peter. <laughs> so before we go on to the next topic, I've got to ask, what are the Instagram DMs like? Because I think everybody's one. I mean, I'm sure there's some listeners here that have probably slid in them a few times. Do you know what? A or lot of Instagram to. DMs are just generally really lovely. Oh, now really? And then, yeah, now and then you'll get a picture of a, you'll get a set of tits. Oh, uh, that's, nice. That, that's always interesting. Um, <laughs> How does that do for you? Like, is that are you going to reply? Is that going to stay in your requests? No. Yeah, that's I not mean, the way to go, girls. You, you don't. Well, uh, we say that. I mean, if you if you want to send them, then I don't mind. Um, <laughs> He's not opposed to it, guys. <laughs> oh yeah, I'm not opposed to it. Um, but yeah, <laughs> to be honest with you, it's always just 
I think when it comes to dating apps and all that sort of stuff, the first message side of stuff doesn't really matter. Mm. People just go, it's quite a shallow thing. You just go on physical appearance, don't you? Yeah, That's yeah. literally, because you've got no other reason to, you, you're flicking through people or looking at pictures just based on physical appearance. Mm. So actually the first message isn't really important. It's whether or not you can carry that on. So it's quite a shallow way of dating really. Isn't it? But then I suppose mm. everything is, any, any kind of online dating is always quite shallow because the only thing you're really interested in is whether or not you fancy that person aesthetically from their picture. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But then everyone's a fucking catfish aren't they you know I mean? <laughs> there is that i mean that that is a whole nother story we could really get into that but that's definitely a whole other story so would do you, you think you look better in person or in oh, pictures now oh p um i mean if i said person i feel like i'd be being cocky and if i said picture i feel like i'm i'm, I'm digging myself out <laughs> no not really i think i don't think it's depends cocky what angle you, feel like you catch me at if i'm like it depends what angle i feel like yeah, I feel like we can get a good picture sometimes, but I feel I'm probably better in person. I'm not going to lie. I'm not. I'm not. Good I, answer. I, I tend to say I can pose in front of a camera, but I think, yeah, I think you probably see the real me better. Good and answer. Not... See, I hate that. Go on. I hate having pictures. Do hate you? It. Yeah. I, mate, I mean, I can't smile in pictures. That's why I never, that's why everyone thinks I'm miserable. If I Wait. smile, I look like a. No, Wait, I can't. Ma- what, about, what about your MasterChef picture? That was a big one for you, wasn't it? <laughs> Fuck off. How about that? Um, because the... <laughs> I'm actually belly laughing. <laughs> I love right. MasterChef, Pete. I'm not gonna lie. I'm actually a huge fan of MasterChef. So I, uh... I saw that, and uh, I can't. I think I, you know. Uh... Yeah, I mean, it was a big smile. They, they, it's they a basically great said smile. to me, "I'm only joking." It's a great smile. Fantastic. It's not. I look borderline <laughs> like a serial killer. Um, and that's the problem. Is I can't smile in pictures. But I mean, the way they took that picture was I was miserable as fuck. Um, and they was like, can you try and look like you want to be here? And I was like, not really. And then I made a joke with a cameraman and they snapped it. Stop. That's basically what happened. That's so how I'm... they got it. Yeah, so I look like a again? fucking Cheshire. Um, <laughs> see what I mean? I can't smile. I look like, I just look like a serial killer. Um, so yeah, thanks for that MasterChef <laughs> reference. I fucking well, no, hate that I'm gonna, picture. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to bring I it back. It. I'm going to bring it back. I was so unaware. I was actually so unaware. But I'm going to bring it back. I feel like you have your signature smudge, I'm going to call it. So, and then that suits you. So you don't always have to smile. Like, you've got your signature smudge. So I wondered, for our viewers on YouTube right now, could you show us how you schmize in a picture? Schmize? Sh- yeah, I feel like that's what... Schmooze? Schmize? How do you... Smize. Schmize. Oh, uh... <laughs> oh, he's having me off back now, guys. All right, smize. Schmize. I can't speak. <laughs> There isn't really a signature smize, is there? Oh, there definitely is. What, wait, like blue steel? Wait. I'll tell you what, Nat. If you, right, if you do it for me then, if you do uh, your blue steel, I'll do mine. Oh, my God. Okay. You Come on. Mm-hmm. No, we've got to do it together. Oh, we've got oh, we'll, to like the clap. Yeah, can, right. can we get a count? Like the clap. <laughs> I wondered what you meant. <laughs> can we get a countdown from somebody in the production crew, please? A big, loud three, two, one. And where am I looking for this? Where are you looking? Look directly into your camera. My eyes are going to look like I'm looking off because I'm going to look directly into mine, which is above my Okay. Laptop. I have to be careful because I've got a lazy eye. So, you um, don't. It, it, no, I, that's why the original, that's where the pirate nickname came from. I had to wear an eye patch as a child. I never knew that. That's where it came from. Do you know what? Yeah. We're learning so much about you, Pete. I know. I'm Tell loving me, it. I'm I told too you much we'd away get here, deep. Aren't I? I told you we'd get deep and I'm here for it. But who's going to do our countdown? What lovely person? We have got someone. Can you hear, Pete? Should we have a test? I can I can hear. Shout nice and loud, babes. You ready? It's gonna be in three, two, one, and we're both gonna schmize everybody. Let's get ready. Don't know what mine's gonna turn out like. Wow. Ready. Wait, you ready? Three, two, one. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't stand it. Did I go cross eyed? Yours was good. I think I went cross eyed. I started with like a schmize, and then I was like, and yeah, then no, just I, turned I'm, to mush. I'm pretty sure my left eye was in a different fucking postcode. <laughs> Well, there you go. Do you know what? That's probably one of my favourite parts of the podcast. That's going to be a brilliant little soundbite there. I'm obsessed. That's definitely going well, on Instagram. Luckily for you, you've already got a fella. Now, now people see that. <laughs> that's me. Fuck now. I was already on the way out. That's oh, really sealed please. it for me. Stop. I feel like you're going to get so many more girls messaging you in your DMs after this podcast. They're going to love it. They're going to love it. Well, I, was, I mean, that's why I've come on, really. It's exactly. Just to, it's over. all for the girls. <laughs> right, so back to where we were, back to where we were. So we're going to go on to some quick fire questions, and I want your honest opinion answers, okay. everything. I mean, I feel like you're quite honest and to the point, and I love that. So let's go. Are you ready? I okay, can't ready. What's the most romantic thing you've ever done? Um, I... Someone that I was seeing, unfortunately, her dog died, so I, I, I bought her a new dog for Christmas and surprised her with it. 
10 points. Love that one. Here for that one. It was her dream dog as well. Oh, just to add it in there. Yeah, that, that you did well there. You did well there. Okay. On the contrast inside, what's the most fuckboy slash prick of the week thing you've done? <laughs> um, I mean, breathe probably. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, oh God. I mean, how long have you got? Come on, Fucking hell. Sorry, this is a quick part. Um, messaged um, people behind an ex's back. Okay. Would you put yourself on Prick of the Week for that? I'll put myself Prick of the Week every week. <laughs> I want to see that on the next episode, please, okay? Yeah, you will. <laughs> okay, and there, there you quick fire. We are going to go on to another segment of the podcast in a minute. But on a more serious note, Pete, I wondered, after this whole experience of lockdown and, you know, everything we've spoken about, do you think you'll date any differently when we do come out of lockdown? Um, do you know what? Yeah, I do, actually. I think I think it's about being selective mm -hmm. um, and appreciating every person that you actually go on a date with. Um, and I think I think a lot of people are guilty, and, and and I definitely am. Do you know what I mean? I haven't got the best reputation in the world, and I think sometimes you don't take dates as seriously as what you should. But every single date you go on could be the new love of your life. So I think you need to, yeah, you need to appreciate people more. There you go. And I think I will be doing that. Well, we look forward to seeing it. And to those lucky girls, I mean, you know, you could be the love of Pete's life. So. Bring your can get a fucking, yeah, if I can get a fucking date after this. <laughs> oh, P, P, I feel like you taught yourself down. This this episode is going to, uh, I think it's going to do very well for you. Not that you need it. Do you enjoy doing it? Do you enjoy doing it? I love podcasts? it, love it. It's so good. Do you know what? It's like you said before, I just love the different people I get to meet. I love working with all the guys and just, it's just fun. I like to talk, so it's easy yeah. in yeah, that I, sense. I mean, I, I've just started the second series of mine. Mm. and um the first series we did before lockdown and it was um it's based on tattoos it's called just a little yeah, prick yeah. and um good name thanks do you know what I mean? <laughs> up there for thinking down thinking. there for down there for fuck all um <laughs> so, right now yeah right now yeah fuck me uh, to be honest with you i think it's hidden it's hibernating now uh, it's been that fucking long it's like a fucking tortoise it'll come it's out in summer. Off. yeah it's yeah in summer it, in summer it'll come out of its shell um <laughs> so <laughs> Fuck, you're recording this as well. It's great. Jesus it's, all, it's all good. It's all good. So when I did mine, we, we did loads of different tattoo artists. Mm. Um, but we went to the studios and they, I interviewed them whilst they tattooed me. No um, way. Yeah, which was quite fun. But I tattooed the oldest tattoo artist in the world. So he's 90 odd. Um, and he like, walks with two fucking like, sticks and that. And uh, he's geezer called Doc Price. And when we got there, I'm interviewing him. He didn't know what the fucking podcast was. He couldn't understand anything, which was just jokes anyway. <laughs> so we got all the way down to Plymouth. Um, in his studio and he's tattooing me and he, he, he was telling me this story and I said well listen I want you to tattoo me because I want to be tattooed by the oldest tattoo artist in the world so you can do whatever you want so he told me this story about his grandchild who was my age like 32 and he died so I was like oh right and he was like you remind me a little bit of him so can I tattoo the last thing I tattooed on him so I went yeah of course without thinking you know what could this be um, as it turns out what he's tattooed on me is Casper the fucking friendly ghost uh, he didn't do it small and also because he's 90 he shakes like a shitting dog so the tattoo, the, the Casper is cross-eyed and has legs. So it looks more like the fairy liquid bait. In fact, I'm going to show you. Show me. I need to see. Come on, guys. Please say we're recording this. Oh, my God. He Wait, signed it. That's his signature. That's his signature. Do you know what it actually looks like? Well, well the, go on. The, the Michelin man without the roll. Yeah, it does. And I don't know if that's because, uh, I mean, I'm sure he said Casper. But um, obviously his eyesight's not great. I'm sure the geezer's got fucking two cataracts. But yeah, crack on. You just fucking get a needle out and fucking jab it in me, mate. Um, and also he did it that big. I said to him, that's one of the only spaces I've really got left. Um, so he went full he's in. He's taking it. He's but, taking it. But because he told me the story about like his grand, I couldn't then go. You, well, you, you ain't... invested. You invested. You were yeah, like, yeah I... I can't let this old guy down. Yeah, and I can't then say to him, well, you're not putting that fucking sack of shit on me, are you? <laughs> You know I mean? When he's tattooed, yeah, oh my God, that would be horrific. So I was like, and at the end of it, you know one of them really awkward things and you have to go, yeah, and thanks for that. I was so <laughs> drained by the whole experience. I was like, and thanks to Doc Price, it's been great. Um, <laughs> but yeah, anyway. That that was, um, that story will keep me going through a few more weeks of lockdown, honestly, when I remember that. I don't remember oh, the vision of that tattoo. Listen, I will stories, I've got that. fucking stories for days, babe. <laughs> Right, now, Pete, as this is a Valentine's special episode and you're our love doctor and expert of the day, we have got a very special segment that we've created just for you. Are you ready to hear it? Um, I'm ready for it. I am ready. Okay, it's called Questions You Can't Ask Your Boyfriend. Woo! Yeah, I was Ooh. really expecting everyone else to get up on that. Ooh. They're on there. Yeah! Questions You Can't Ask Your Boyfriend. 
your boyfriend. Okay, so Fucking we got D. Everyone else has fallen asleep, aren't they? I know, yeah, they're over it. Like, we're, we're still here, but, you know, I don't know, where, don't know where the guys in the background are. No, I'm fully joking. So, we have got some amazing questions here. We asked our followers on Instagram, on the Pretty Little Thing Instagram, to send in questions they can't ask their boyfriends, and we would like you to answer instead. Now, Pete, I'm, I'm not going to lie. Some of them were out there. I'm going to just say out there. They were pretty wild. So, we have tamed them down a little bit. Okay, all right. You this ready? is going to be interesting, this, isn't it? Okay, are we ready? So question, yeah, I'm so excited to see your answer. Question number one, do you think about other girls? Yes. I'm sorry, that's I mean, listen, blokes do. And I don't necessarily think, think, think that's a bad thing. And, and also, women do the same thing. Nah. I mean, we ain't going to answer anything on a podcast, but... Uh... <laughs> but listen, I don't necessarily... We're you... human, we're human. Yeah, listen, thinking about other things now and then, I don't it's necessarily, different. yeah, it's completely different to doing Zank. And mm. you can always appreciate a good looking person regardless, but, but. 100%. Yeah, so, so yeah, listen, blokes do, I'm afraid. There we That's go, girls, there's your answer. But not then the answer you wanted, but. <laughs> But then it's that way of accepting it. You've just got to accept that that's the way it is. And I think that's a good point is you've got to think, if you want to ask your boyfriend that, ask yourself the same question. Let's exactly. see. Let's, let's be fair. Exactly. Let's be fair. Okay, now this is an interesting one. And as it's Valentine's Day, I feel like it's a good time to ask this. Somebody has asked, is it right to accept gifts from another guy? What, if you've got a boyfriend? Yeah. So you're in a relationship, yeah, and the girl is receiving gifts from other guys. What are you saying about that? Um, well, listen, there's two ways to look at that. From the guy's point of view, pissed off. Why is another guy buying my bird a, um, you know, a present? On the plus side, means I don't have to buy it for her. Um, do you know what I mean? So there's, there's two ways to look there's at always, that. There's always a win somewhere. But should you accept it? No, I mean, you shouldn't really, should you? Yeah, you know I feel what like I mean? that's like, a I bit... Just, if, if, if it was me, and not, listen, I, I might have a bit of a warped opinion on things. If it was me, and um, I wouldn't accept saying from someone else if I was in a relationship. Mm. And what about, okay, just to put that option out there for people, what about if it was a close friend? So say you've got yeah, a girlfriend. Yeah, I think that's completely different. Like, for example, you know, like Leisha was just talking about, or mm. I've, got, I've got friends that are girls. I can do whatever, but I think as long as people know that they're friends. And also, that's another thing. Geezers and girls can be mates. Mm. You can do 100%. It. I mean, a lot of the time, sometimes there is like a bit of a crossover, and that's when relationship, that, that, that's when you're not proper friends but you can have a proper <laughs> friend like least she's like my sister do you yeah. know what I mean so you can do it if they're close friends but if it depends on what the intent of the present is yeah like if it's if it's like a set of underwear from a guy like if, you're not gonna if be someone's that, buying my bird underwear they're getting a slap <laughs> right there's straight limits. on slap there there's you go li- guys he can there's buy me limits. some fucking pants if he wants but he ain't <laughs> buying me bird a set of fucking knickers <laughs> There we go. Okay, this this is a really good one because I feel like everybody at some point has probably thought of this in their relationship. Maybe not everyone, but a lot of people. Do you still think about your ex? Um, oh, I think I think some people do. Yeah, mm. I, I think after, but it depends what you're thinking. Again, it, like it's, it's it's subjective, isn't it? It's what you're thinking. Mm. If you're thinking about your ex in a certain way, then you shouldn't be with a person you're with. Yeah. Because if you're thinking, it's like anything. It's if you're thinking about other other guys or other girls when you're in a relationship, it depends what you're thinking. If you're thinking this is so much better than my ex, then fucking happy days. If you're thinking <laughs> ain't as good as my ex, then get going. Maybe so you need to question the relationship. You yeah. need to start questioning it. It depends what you're thinking about it. I think at some point people will always try and compare based on relationships they've had before. And I, think, I don't think necessarily that's a bad thing unless you're comparing and what you're with now ain't up to fucking scratch. Always upgrade. There you go, guys. It's all about upgrading through life. That is upgrade what we need. That's life. the energy we're here for. Growth and up, uh, upgrading. That's that's what we're looking for. Growth. That's what we need in 2021. Growth. Let's just growth. wish for growth. I don't know why um, we're both doing this. It looks like we're doing nice, the YMCA. It? It's it is nice, nice. Though, isn't it? I feel yeah, like I'm, I'm I'll be honest with you. Yeah, I'm a little bit out of breath, but <laughs> Yeah, you've not worked out for seven years, like oh, you said before. Me. <laughs> okay, I love that. <laughs> just get some water for Pete, guys, please. Yeah. Okay, so question number four. I like this one. This is interesting. Now, remember, the person has used a celebrity's name, but I think what we need to remember is it's basically saying, well, I'll read it out to you first. If I get the opportunity to get with Anthony Joshua, would you allow it? So basically, that girl's saying, if my dream man, if I get the opportunity to go and do whatever that's going to be. It's the list. The list. Are you going to allow her to do it? Would you allow her to do it? Seriously. Would I? Absolutely fucking not, no. Uh, she might not come back. 
Well, she definitely fucking wouldn't if she was my bird. Be gone. <laughs> like, shut up. Um, no, listen, this whole listing, it's a nice idea, isn't it? And also, these people, as much as you people look at celebrities and even people like Anthony Joshua, who's, who's amazing, like, it's still just an, it's just another bloke. You wouldn't let a shag Barry yeah. down the fucking co-op, would you? Well, exactly. So, yeah, there you go. Exactly. You know what I mean? So and it's a no you- from me. It's a no from Pete. And would you want your guy to do the same to you? Because I'm sure that dream woman, yeah, I wouldn't exactly. want to go there. Exactly. I'm being compared to this dream woman. No, no way. Exactly. You can shag Andy Joshua and I'll, I'll go fly through Margot Robbie. Is that right? <laughs> well, yeah, exactly. I mean, I think girls would have an issue with that. Your girlfriend would definitely have an issue with that. <laughs> exactly. So it's a nice idea theoretically, but, uh, but no. It's not like all, the, all the answers here, guys, you, you should know the answers to these. It's, they're all no so far. So the final question, what is the one thing most girls do that you don't like? I like this. Right. I mean, it could be really, you could really hurt some girls' feelings, <sighs> including mine. I have a thing and this is don't just, hold back. this is just my thing, right? And I'm really fair with this. I don't like bodily functions. Okay, I had. To, I was so slow then to think. Yeah, get you one hundred percent. Burping you. and all that sort of stuff. I don't like the idea of it. But in the same respect, I don't do that in front of all women. Oh well, there you go then. That's so. Nice. It's not like I've got a, like a double standard. Not double on standards. It. That's yeah. just personally for me. That's something I don't like. Um, and also, um, games is a thing that people like to play. Mm. Now, this whole jealousy game that people like to do is a big no-no for me. Right, mm. don't like it. I'm not a particularly jealous person, so I, on occasion, I've had a lot of people try and make me jealous. Oh yeah, that is the biggest put off. It's, it's 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 the biggest put off when a bird tries to make a guy jealous, and probably vice versa, because because instantly you just say, "What are you doing?" Do you know what I mean? It's, it's that embarrassing. Exactly, exactly. It's embarrassing. So they're my two personal things: bodily functions. Just uh, you don't want to imagine. It's just no. No, no. We don't. Honestly, we don't. Like I'm with you on that one. Like you know I don't. I, mean? need, I don't need to. Yeah, it's like, not even. How couples like like no, just people, no. I find it crazy that people think that you're weird if you like that because I I'm actually very much like that. Um, my relationship is very much like that, and people say to me like, "Do you?" St-? And I'm like, mm, no, like, "Let's not talk about that." Like it's just not a thing. Like it's, it's, it's a like an unwritten rule. It's a magical yeah. secret that we'll keep between each other. And It's you know, an unwritten well, rule. We're, like, we're all that's human. It. We all do the same fucking things, but we don't need but to talk about it. we don't need to know it. about we it. We don't need to know about it. <laughs> and I just find it absolutely baffling when, and people are like, oh, it's just because you're not that comfortable with someone. No, it's because I'm not a fucking cretin. <laughs> that's what it is. <laughs> like, just no. No, thank you. Don't do it. <laughs> Pete, well, there we go. That was questions you can't ask your boyfriend with Pete Wicks. Let us know if you want us to come back and do some more of that because I feel like we could really get some more juicy ones in there. Now, before I let you go, we've been here for a long time. I'm going to ask you a couple more quick fire questions that somebody from PLT actually sent in for you. Okay, wonderful. I feel like these are special. They're all about you, okay? They're general. I, re- I need quick fire answers, yeah? Are you ready? Sorry, that's a good way of saying, listen, you waffled on for two hours. Shut the fuck up and answer no, Pete, quickly. I'm not going to lie. I- I'd, stay here- I'd stay here for hours. So honestly, Come on in, do let's do thing. it. I'll, I'll do be quick. Thing. I'll be you quick. You ready? Okay. If you could change anything about yourself, what would it be? Um, hands. What's your favourite trait about yourself? Um, uh, kindness. Nice. If you could only smell one smell for the rest of your life, what would it be? My dog. Oh, I love that. Where do you go to when you're sad? My dog. <laughs> <laughs> love that too. And finally, I think it's a lovely one to end the podcast on. What is your biggest life lesson? My biggest life lesson. Do you know what? I said it earlier on and I think this is um, the most important thing that anyone could do is enjoy the journey you're on because you only get one shot at this and stop worrying about where you're going and the destination that you're going to end up in. What's meant to be will be. Very true, Pete. And on that note, it's been an absolute pleasure getting to know you today and me and you. And thank you so much for being so honest. I've genuinely loved every single second of this podcast. I've had such a good time, honestly, babe. It's been an absolute pleasure. You're a sweetheart and love you all. Oh, we all love you from PLT. Can we get a clap in the audience? Pete, come back again soon. I feel like this isn't over. I feel like we're going to have to bring you back some time for something else. So get ready. We're just going to be... I'll be sitting here waiting for you, babe calling you up any day okay well Pete it's been amazing to all of our amazing listeners thank you so much for tuning into this week's episode of PLT Behind Closed Doors starring the amazing Pete Wicks if you have enjoyed this episode please remember to leave us a little review and don't forget to subscribe and we will see you next week